Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Trick Game Telecom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with a deluge, a plethora of Intel processors, which are scheduled to launch, in some cases, by mid-next month. That's February of 2018, if you're watching this at some point in the future. And then we're going to move over to Apple, and news that the company are offering you the ability to turn off the feature which, of course, causes your uh, phone's processor to slow down if the, the uh, phone has gone through a certain number of battery cycles. But, as I said, we're going to start things out with Intel, because a whole list of SKUs has leaked, some for mobility and some uh, for uh, desktop. We're going to be starting things out with the desktop uh, side first, and uh, these, of course range from Celerons all the way to the core lineup and some Pentiums as well. With the Celeron, you have the G4900, which runs at 3.1 gigahertz. That's 64 Australian dollars. We'll get into conversions in just a moment. Whereas the top of the range processor that is listed in these SKUs is the i5-8600, which once again has 3.1 for the base. It's, of course, 11 uh, LGA 1151, just like all of these desktop processors, 9 megabytes of free cache, and costs 329 Australian dollars. And there's also a uh, i5 uh, 8500 as well, with a slightly lower clock speed of 3 gigahertz, and of course, 9 megabytes of free cache, and that costs 290 Australian dollars. So, the 86 and 8500, as you would expect, are six cores with no hyperthreading, so six cores, six threads. We don't know what the turbo clocks are going to be. However, in terms of pricing, they are fairly competitive. Converted, if we were to look at the 8600, it's going to roughly equate to about 260 US dollars, obviously depending on conversion rates at the time. The bottom of the lineup, the G4900, which is once again a Celeron, is going to cost just 64 Australian dollars, or if you prefer, about 50 US dollars. Those processors are going to be just two cores, two threads. Uh, we don't know at, at the moment these specifications for 100% accuracy, but it looks like they're going to be running at 3.1 or 3.2 gigahertz respectively. And of course, turbo clocks are not applicable. It's also worth noting that the i3... Uh, 8300 also leaked, and that is a four-core processor. Obviously, no SMT there, but it is running with a base clock of 3.7 gigahertz. That's not too bad at all. It is the same clock speed, essentially, as, let's say, the 8700 for the base, but turbo clocks have not been confirmed. There are also a slew of mobility chips which have also leaked, including the top-of-the-range uh, i9-8950HK. Now, what's very impressive about this chip is, once again, it is mobile, but has a turbo frequency, if all uh, cores are running anyway, of 4300 MHz, but if only a single core is being pushed to its limits, then it runs at 4800. Of course, in reality, most applications now are really going to be uh, pushing the multi-threading side of things, so it's very unlikely you're going to see the 4800 in the real world. Pretty sure you all know this anyway, but... I'll just quickly mention it is a 6-core, 12-thread processor with a rather impressive 6, um, I'm sorry, uh, 12 megabytes level 3 cache and 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache per core. Perhaps the most interesting thing with all of this is the fact that it does actually support the ability to overclock it, which is definitely going to be a bonus for folks with... Uh, the need for serious horsepower on the go. Of course, you can imagine what that's going to do to the battery life. There's also the i7-8850H, and this was leaked just a few days ago. It's a 6-core, 12-thread processor. It doesn't, of course, have the i9 branding, but there's a reason for that. The level 3 cache has been knocked down from a full 12 megabytes to just 9 megabytes, and uh, overclocking support has also been nuked. Unsurprisingly, clock speeds have also seen a bit of a hit with a all-core boost of just 4 GHz, or if just a single core is being pushed to its limits, then it's 4.3 GHz. This is, of course, quite a difference between the 4.3 and the 4.8 of the previous chip. Another interesting chip, which I imagine some of you might be interested in, is the Xeon E2186M. Now, this thing is very similar to the 
uh, i9-8950HK that I just discussed a moment ago. It still has 12 megabytes of level 3 cache, but with a 4.3 gigahertz in all cores and a boost of a single core at 4.8 gigahertz. So that means that the i9-8950HK and the Xeon E2186M are not only flagship parts for mobile, but they have also hit the fastest boost rate, at least if you count single core, of 4.8 gigahertz, and that is the highest frequency and mobility processor that actually hit, at least to my knowledge. So, let's discuss Apple, shall we? Apple have gotten themselves into a lot of trouble, not just legally with the whole being sued thing, which obviously is not a happy time for any company, but also from the public perception. And also, to be honest with you, tech journalists have, for the most part, pretty much lambasted them and dragged them over coals. But it's really the public image which is the big deal. Of course, it's fair to say that mobiles now, if you're referring to the market as a whole, there's more choice than ever. And pretty uh, savvy advertising from Samsung, LG, and other companies has really helped to take some of the market share anyway. And possibly even more important than that, the mind share away from Apple. And obviously news that, well, you're essentially having your phone's performance throttle didn't go down well. And yes, they did release various statements to try and glaze over this. But ultimately, that's not what people want to hear. What people want, of course, is A, to be told, and B, to have a choice. Because, as I've said 100,000 times over by now, the bottom line is, with lithium-ion batteries, usage scenarios are not even. So, for once again, if you're in a different region of the world, based upon, well, not only your usage scenario, but also the environment, the temperature that you're operating the phone in, the moisture levels, that type of stuff, it can have a major impact on the phone. So, for you to just choose a random number and say, well, okay, on average, this is the number of cycles that a phone has to go through before the battery uh, can no longer put out enough juice to support the CPU running properly without it crashing, it's going to tick people off because A, their phone might be okay, and B, of course, the bigger question is, why wasn't the CPU, well, pretty much built with resiliency of this kind of nature in mind? Anyway, in an interview that has now been published by ABC News, Tim Cook, who is, of course, the Apple CEO, has said that developer beta of an iOS is going to be coming next month and this will provide users with more information on the state of their battery and ultimately throttle CPU performance if things are going awry. Unfortunately, his verbiage might not have been exactly 100% um, well taken, I guess. Because while he said that maybe we weren't clear, and we deeply apologise for anyone who thinks we have some other kind of motivation, he also added that some people may have just simply have not been paying attention when they explained what these new features were. So in short, the new update will in a, indeed allow you to disable the built-in CPU throttling, but on top of that, he has also said, well... We will tell somebody saying, hey, we're reducing your performance by some amount in order to not have an unexpected restart. And if you don't want that, you can turn that off. Now, we don't recommend it because we think that people's iPhones are really important to them. And you can never tell when something is so urgent. The bottom line is, I think, in my opinion, if you didn't have issues, then you just don't enable the feature. As I said, the best solution, in my opinion, at the very start, would be when you first restarted your phone, it literally popped up a big, massive, you know, neon sign pretty much saying, look, we've added this new feature. It's enabled by default, but you are free to disable it. However, if your phone restarts unexpectedly, we highly suggest you do enable it. And if your phone basically, you know, goes on a reboot loop or you can't get in properly and, you know, you can't enter your passcode or whatever, then it would just enable it and say, look, your phone is very unstable, we either suggest you replace the battery or keep this enabled because the battery now is no longer able to supply enough juice to the CPU. But hey, that's just my opinion. With all of that said, I do also want to leave with one final little small note, and that is, remember, I am going away to Norway. Uh, well, basically, I'm heading towards the airport tomorrow. I'm on a coach at half one, if memory serves. So... Uh, I will have a video or two that is pre-recorded, which Amy will upload, and of course she will be taking care of the channel while I am gone. I won't be too long. I will be back on Thursday, which means 
assuming you know I don't have really terrible jet lag and it's only Norway, so I doubt it. I'll be producing content on the Friday, so you're not going to have to do too long without me. And I know it's I know it's difficult that we have to be apart for some time, but hey, you'll you'll, you'll be okay. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.